<clears throat> Everybody, yes, the time has finally come. The plane that I've been waiting for the most to come to the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 has finally arrived. And everybody, it is the Concord. Yes, released just a few hours ago here by the developers of DC Design, who are quite a renowned developer. We, you can now buy this airplane, which has been teased for months, actually for a year now. And my God, I'm very much excited. Maybe a little bit emotionally charged, but I'm not really in a stage where I can do an unbiased reveal or something. But that doesn't matter, let's maybe try to do it anyway. So yes, you can really now buy this plane from the Just Flight store for $35. A price that is a little bit, honestly, alarming. You know, honestly, before we start off. See, the thing about the Concorde is that it's an incredibly complex airplane. I mean, look at that engineering panel. I think to date, right now, this must be the most complex Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 plane that there is. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Jesus Christ, this is crazy. And as we've learned on the channel, these complex complex planes like to cost a lot of money, understandably enough. All right, I mean, you can easily pay north of $120. And this $30 price does kind of lower my expectations, but let's see this anyway. Maybe see how realistic this really is. And yes, welcome already to the Concorde. Now, I, of course, have never flown a proper Concorde in real life because, you know, I'm, I'm still alive and stuff, right? Not a dinosaur. Even though I, I actually have been inside a real one. Not in the cockpit though. Anyway, I have actually flown though the Concorde in X-Plane. This is the Koli Mata Concorde that has been out for years now and it's absolutely brilliant. All of those switches here work. And I've actually learned to fly the Concorde in that simulator. So I'm going to use the flying experience I got from flying this proper realistic add-on to compare it here. Maybe see if it's realistic as well. Now, before we start off, can we, can we, get, can we get rid of the woman? Like, seriously, why would you add her in the cockpit? I mean, I'm, I don't have anything against women. We can just set the co-pilot to zero because it's genuinely kind of creepy, honestly. Yes! Here we go. Get rid of the women. Great. All right. Now, a good way to tell the realism of an add-on plane like this is doing a little bit of a startup procedure. Now, I haven't flown a Concorde in a long time. But once you get the hang of it, it's kind of easy to start up this plane. Now, first of all, all of those switches seems to work, which is a little bit scary. But let's just start off with the electricity, as always. So let's go ahead and, you know, use the ground power. And let's maybe try to turn on that battery right here. Okay. All right. I mean, I can already tell... Mm, this panel seems a little bit simplified from at least the other Concorde add-on that we flew. Mm, I'm not sure. I mean, what it can be easily tell off the bat here, for example, the instruments being right up there and ready to go. That's not something you would have in real life. In real life, you would have a lot more switches just to get these instruments to turn on. That's just a, a general example. So realism is not up there. Now, anyway, let's maybe switch some more switches right here that will hopefully lead into the startup of this airplane. All right, turn all of that on, looking good. Turn that plate air, there we go. Okay, come on. Mm-hmm, looking good. And yes! Look at that, we can already see some spinach in that engine, as you can tell. Can you see that? Tower's looking good, all right. That's a little bit of an interesting startup. That that now that literally took me like 10 minutes to understand properly, if I'm being honest. For example, just the fact that you don't see actually an open or closed sign here on the start valve. You know, it's just generally some e details that, you know, makes a little bit confused as a proper Concord connoisseur. Anyway, plane's now properly starting up. Yeah, so far, not all to 100% realistically. In real life, you would also have to turn on the fuel control here, of course, get the ignition going. We did not at all interact with this panel so far, which I think is interesting, like during the mass heaters. This is not all too crazy, but what I do have to say, I just found this out. This plane was developed by only one person. So, all right, good. Anyway, our plane is now starting itself up in a way. There we go, and two compressors are all both up. And one is good look, is looking as well. There we go. Plane started up. We can just quickly actually already push back. Here we go. Reversers even work as well. Now blowing out the windows of this airport. Perfect. But all right, everybody. Enough of messing around in the cockpit and just checking if every switch works. It's now time to actually get this plane flying. Let's go and turn on the afterburners. See if that works. Now while we don't have any flaps on board this airplane, it's time to put out something else. <gasps> yeah, the suit drooped, everybody. Since pilots couldn't see out of the plane because of angled landing, engineers put together a solution. The Concorde featured a droop snoot. Droop snoot? Yeah, the, the snoot would droop. 
the snoot droop. Put that out right here. Let's see what that looks like. Here we go. Now, this is actually controlled by the flaps lever. All right, that's interesting. Put that out. See if there's some animation. Yeah, yes, it's coming down nicely. Yes, the snoot droop is actually animated. The snoot droop. And it's coming out, as you can tell. Looking good, and it's now time to take off here from Rio de Janeiro Airport. Let's get this going. Full power here. And afterburners we have indeed. And don't they look beautiful? Let's go full power. Now, you know what? It's a little bit unrealistic. It's maybe the parking brakes and the fact that they can literally hold this plane while its afterburners are running. I mean, geez, the plane can fly two mocks. Right, so this is a little bit awkward now. Where's the parking brake on this airplane? I can literally start it up but not use the parking brake. Uh, um, I guess just press the button on the keyboard then. Yes, here we go. We're running. Now, this is not a very long run with. Let me try to do this. But what I can definitely hear already is that the sound design is actually quite nice. We can hear the beautiful power of this airplane. Let's go now. Get to like a hundred and we need, we need more. We need like 200 at least. Come on, let's go. All right, maybe just try to do this anyway. Oh, okay, we're not going to make this. Good. Good flight test, Swiss Desert One. Thank you very much. That has not gone very well. Yeah, let me just say the takeoff performance is not that good on the Concorde. The landing performance is if you put on the reverse thrust. But anyway, that's gone well. Here we go. We are flying our aeroplane. Now let's go ahead and put the. There we go. The snoot trued up. We're still mixing this high. Looking nice. And we're actually getting quite quick, very quickly indeed. We've already got a mock counter down here. We're not close to one mock just yet, but I cannot wait to hit the sound barrier for sure. How close are we from hitting a mock? Not that far away. Here we go. Let's have a bit of a look out. Maybe we can see some visual effects while we do that. I mean, we can hear some sound effect. I was like, oh, no way they did that. All right, since we're moving faster than the speed of sound, um, we cannot play, hear this plane here in this kind of stage. That is so cool. Look, if we, if we go behind the plane, we can hear it. But if we go in front of it, of course we can't because the sound, we, we're faster than sound. <gasps> A moment of silence for the speed of sound, quite literally. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, what's kind of disappointing is the fact that we cannot see anything, or at least I didn't see anything. Any vortexes, whatever, that's not really a thing. But what we can see here is the great pollution of the air. Look at that. Very beautiful. Yes, yeah, everybody. What a successful Concord flight hitting Mach 1. Beautiful. All right. Let me perform some landing testing now. For that one, we are in Hong Kong. Kai talk, everybody. Yes, what a place to test landing some airplanes. I mean, the thing is, Concorde flew to Kai Tak in real life at one point. So that's fine. I mean, we are talking about a British French plane and we're not going to Britain or France at once anyway. Let's maybe try it now, this Hong Kong landing. Now, our speed is already looking good at 200 knots. This is a, a quick plane again. No flaps, for sure. But the landing gear down, get everything ready. What you can hear in the background, which is very annoying, is landing gear alert. Shut up. Now we can already see the approach lights of Kaita coming up. This is going to be a little bit of an exotic landing. Let me just say that. And yeah, in general, not a rather buttery machine, the Concorde. Let's come in for a bit of a landing here anyway. All right, looking good. Okay, that's definitely been a tail strike. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. But anyway, let's maybe try to stop here, which goes very quickly again because of that huge reverse thrust, and we might have bursted that tire. I am kind of sorry. Anyway, Jesus Christ, that's a lot of tire smoke. Don't be so drama about this extremely badly done landing. Shut up. Now, yes, I did kind of struggle with that. Let Come on, shut up now. It's fine. Jesus Christ, that tire is on fire. That kind of rhymed. Anyway, this has been a very Concorde-ish landing here with that, that beautiful tail landing gear here. Not a, you know, dangerous one for sure. Could have done it a little bit better though. But you know, the Concorde was never known as a butter machine. So don't be a drop. Oh, all right, we fixed the tire by hard landing it again. Great. So yes, everybody, that's a quick view into the brand new Concorde for the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now, as the price suggests, this isn't crazy. There's a few plain details I haven't covered here just yet, but something that does work is the flight management computer, which is very ancient on the 1969 Concorde. That does seem to kind of seem to work all right or something that's cool even though we don't have details like aligning the inertial navigation systems implemented just yet and we've crashed great to see but yeah this is definitely an amazing aircraft pretty well priced actually very cheap for what you get this is still incredibly realistic i do have to say so 
Get this. Get this plane. I can only recommend it to you. And so this is definitely very exciting. Sorry for criticizing you so much. And uh, thank you guys for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. Now, thank you to all my members here on YouTube. Like Mike, Jacob, Tanner, Mubarak, Tanner and K, Oh Man, The Human, Robbie, Tim, Matt, Sleepy Boy, Calvin, Kelly Chaos, Ryland, Moritz, Jackie Boy, New the York, Shadow, Noah, and Death Rider.